What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I got an all tracks controller. It's it's brand new to me. Hoping it works great on this golf cart. Um it's used. It's a SR48 400 amp. It has a USB connection. Uh, so we can hook it up to the laptop after we get it installed and see if we can adjust some parameters. And let's see if we can squeeze a few more uh, miles per hour out of this old cart. Now I mentioned that I had an Alltrax controller. I don't know if I told you guys it was used. Not everything I buy is brand new. And if I can find a deal somewhere, I'm jumping on it. So uh, I just really want to see what we can do with a, a DC golf cart. We know that we can you need to go AC on it. Let's see what we can do with the DC technology. Exactly what I'm doing. So. The motor I got from Plum Quick, um, I'm not going to tell you which one it is just yet, but it requires you to have an aftermarket controller and a good set of batteries. So without further ado, let's get this right here into the golf cart and see exactly what we can do with this controller on today's video. I do know we need to take apart the back seat and uh, by doing that we can access the area that we can remove the OEM controller before we get this one right here installed. Now, when you're working on a golf cart, one of the first things you want to do is to disconnect uh, either the ground or the positive. I'm going to just disconnect the ground wire here. Just so you don't want to shorten anything out while you're working in the back back there. It's just a very uh, preventative step of doing that. I went ahead and disconnected the ground from the battery there. It has an aftermarket solenoid is what it looks like to me. Looks like somebody has already been in here with the controller one time. There's writing here. It looks like a magic marker. YGR on the controller settings there. We got our main solenoid coming in, which is the yellow and the green. This black coming in here, that's going to be your battery. And the blue wire is going to the S2 on the motor. We need to go ahead and disassemble all of these right here, get them taken off of there, get it unmounted, and mount the new controller. Now, since I have all the wires disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and remove the four bolts holding the controller in. I believe it's going to be a 7 16 Let me try it out and see. Yep, that's what mine is. That's what the two top ones look like. Since the other bolts were different on this one, um, I was going to say that maybe the two ones would be different, but I think... All four holes should be about the same. All right, I was able to get three of the four bolts out. The controller is now free. There's that last bolt there. So here we go. This is the old Curtis controller. This was a 1204-410. It was a current as a 225 amp controller, 36 to 48 volts. So it's been about 24 hours since the last clip. Um, once I finished taking the controller out, I did a comparison on the table. I had someone call me off of a marketplace uh, deal that something I had on marketplace. So I went and did that. Then I went and helped my neighbor. He's got a 58 Chevrolet Apache. I took the motor out of my C10 this past summer. We put it in his 58 and uh, we were doing some upgrades to it. And um, we've been trying to uh, hunt down a vacuum leak on it, but I think we've got it pretty much taken care of. But we need to get back on the old tracks today. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna mount our battery negative here. We're gonna mount the blue wire going to the motor here. Our power is going to be here, the yellow wires on the top, the green wires on the bottom, and then our red wires in place here. And I have a USB cable that will attach to it so we can go to the Alltrax toolkit and see if we can tune this right here to give us a little bit more while we still have the stock motor. We're going to mount both our yellow and our green to this one here. That's going to go to the battery positive. Now we got started, I'll get a half inch socket and the uh, drill in just a minute and we'll tighten that down. The rest of these wires here is going to go to the battery negative. That's going to be the ground coming from the batteries and a couple of these ring terminals as well. We're 
We're going to mount these three wires down here. I believe the J5 is going to be my yellow. My J4 is going to be green. And then we're going to take um, the other one and go to the red connector right here. We're still able to use all the same um, spade terminals that was on the factory setup. And then we're looking for the blue wire down here as well. And that's going to go over here at the top right. Next up, we have all of these installed. We're going to go ahead and get it mounted up to the cart using the factory bolts from earlier or yesterday. All right, got one started here. We're gonna go ahead and replace the socket. And I want to say that was a, so that was a 7 16th, I believe. I gotta replace two more on the very bottom. And then this right here would be done. I think I think I might loosen this right here up, turn it over a little bit, and tighten it back down just to make that one wire look a little bit better on there. That looks better, if you ask me. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and get the two lower bolts mounted on there so the controller will be securely mounted. All right, I got the controller in. All four <laughs> bolts are mounted. Everything's hooked up. Um, if you're doing a Autrax controller, this is actually a USB printer cable here. The printer cable's got this like, almost like a square end right here. That's what you're gonna use to plug into the all tracks. All right, so I went ahead and ran the USB cable from the all tracks to the battery compartment. After I get the access panel put back on, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the seat. I'll meet you guys up at the front of the golf cart. So I have that white wire coming out the side of the controller on the side of the golf cart frame there. Just like some of the other wires is going to the controller and going to the motor from the FNR switch. All right, so I have a laptop here on the golf cart and I'm just taking the USB cable. I'm gonna plug it up to the side of it here. All right, so we got the controller plugged in to the laptop here. And I'm not sure if you guys can see any of these settings here on the phone. Blow it up for you a little bit more if you can. Um, so it lets us know over here, the model is a SR48400. It's got a serial number, it's got a build date. So this right here is pushing, what, seven years old on this controller. 48 volt, 400 amp. We got a KSI on voltage here. We have an under voltage and we have an over voltage. Now these being uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, I might go to I don't know, like, let's say like 58 volts here. So I'm gonna just, just 58, enter. Okay, it's got a digital switch. It's got a FN1 speed switch on there. We do not have a speed switch on this unit where you can adjust it on the fly. The max motor amps, max battery amp. I'm gonna just set this right here for 200. Uh, the max Ford motor speed is set at 50. I guess we can just go and let's, let's just give this all the Ford motor speed we need. Max reverse motor speed. I'm gonna leave that at 50. You know what, we might even carry it down to 25. We don't need to go fast in reverse. And then the throttle rate. I'm gonna go 100 on here. Setting is set to the controller. So we should be good right now. I'm gonna just go ahead and unplug the USB cable. It goes away. Let's see what this right here does for the golf cart and see what kind of speeds we can get with just these few settings. I just put the USB cable back in its spot. And if we ever have to uh, go back in there and change some things we will but for the time being that's where it's going to be at 
Let's get our seat back on and take this thing for our first test drive with the new controller. All right, we're gonna try a speed run to see if we've gained anything yet so far, seeing how fast the golf cart is with the all tracks controller. I will say it's got a lot more torque and a lot more pep so far. Fourteen. We'll go to fifteen. See how fast we're going in reverse now. So reverse is working properly. We got reverse set to what, like a quarter of the way. So we did like four or five miles per hour in reverse. And we did like 15 miles per hour in forward. I will say we have a lot more torque than we did. Another thing I've noticed is this right here is starting to beep. But then if you remember, if you've been watching some of my previous videos, when I installed the GPS speedometer, I set up for 15 miles per hour for an alert. And well, it's an alert that's at 15 miles per hour. So that's pretty cool that that's like that. So let's say you're driving in a golf cart community and you have that little speedometer there and you got a you know max speed of 20 or 25 miles per hour whatever it could be but you could set up for that and even if you don't look down at the speedometer and you're just going if you hit the speedometer it'll start beeping i'm happy so far we went from 10 miles or 11 miles per hour we did the lithium batteries went up to like 12 or 13. now we did the all tracks controller we're at 15 miles per hour right now um I can't wait to get the next video. We're going to do the plum quick motor in here and see what kind of speeds we can get. We might adjust the controller a little bit more, see if we can get some more out of it. All right, guys, so there it goes. We went from 10, 11 miles per hour to 13 with the lithium. Then we went to 15 with the Alltrax. Now, even on some of my older carts that when you put a Alltrax or an aftermarket controller on a series cart, you really don't gain a whole lot of miles per hour. I will say our giddy up though, we gain because I can feel a difference between, you know, zero and 10 miles per hour on the golf cart versus before. Next video, we're going to be doing a plum quick motor into this right here golf cart. And I've noticed some other things that's gone wrong with the golf cart since we started working on it. And we're going to address those as well. Until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching the channel. Like always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Watch some other of my content. We'll see y'all later.